As discussed in previous videos, overall, German flak was responsible for more heavy bomber losses and fighters. This is based on the 8th and 15th Air Force's post-war heavy bomber loss statistics from this reference. The U.S. Army Air Forces invested in monies, manpower, equipment, and tactics in developing flak countermeasures. This page from a declassified August 1945, Office of the Assistant Chief of Air Staff Intelligence document titled Flak Neutralization lists nine countermeasure tactics heavy bombers adopted to reduce the flak threat. The intent of this video is to deep dive both items A and B. This includes choosing the optimum axis of attack and avoiding flak by careful route planning to and from the target. This is a channel's eighth video related to German flak that reside in the channel's flak playlist. The principles of flak evasion are described on this page from a September 1945 SYNPAC document titled Flak Intelligence Memorandum No. 9. Plan the mission such that the formations minimize exposure to the flak batteries. Different route planning is adopted to and from the target versus over the target. Flak can only be 100% avoided by flying over or outside the gun's effective range. Routes to and from the target are selected by the flak intelligence officers with the goal to avoid all suspected flak defenses, as defined on this May 1945 Headquarters U.S. Army 9th Air Forces document titled Flak Facts. Sometimes this was not practical due to fuel consumption range issues. The 9th Air Force's poster informed crews to stick to the route planned as to not be surprised by flak fire. Fighters were also routed to avoid flak locations, as discussed in this 1945 Headquarters 65th Fighter Wing, 8th U.S. Air Force's document titled Flak, Light, Intense, and Accurate. The flak danger zones included coastal belts, airfields, towns, and locations on up-to-date flak maps. Complete avoidance of flak while en route to and from the target is the goal. This is an example of a flak map as of January 18, 1945, where 14,560 flak guns are represented. The number of heavy guns per zone is listed. For example, this area has 319 flak guns. For a target located here, the bomber formations will follow this route, bypassing all flak guns until reaching the guns at the target location. This line represents the bomber route from the target. Although flak attacks can occur anywhere over occupied territories, the flak threat is generally concentrated in a narrow zone at the target location. As discussed on this page from a March 1944 Training Headquarters Army Air Forces document titled High Level Precision Bombing, flak usually starts two minutes from the bomb release point. Germany cannot cover the entire occupied territories with their 16,000 flak guns, so they are concentrated near target locations. 70 to 90 percent of flak damage occurs within the target area, as defined on this December 1944 Air Defense Review document. This is why formation, evasion maneuvers, chaff, and radar countermeasures are adopted at the target location, not along the route. Bomber flak losses are summarized in this 8th Air Force's study. During the first five months of 1944, 600 bombers were lost by flak. 200 were lost while flying to and from the target. 400 were lost while over the target. The 200 bomber losses en route to and from the target could have been avoided by flying over flak-free zones. As the bombers approach a heavily defended target area, an analysis will have been conducted to determine the flak threat. The analysis is conducted by a trained flak intelligence specialist. He will produce a flak clock, which will show the most desirable axis of attack to reduce the flak threat. The flak analysis accounts for the flak gun's maximum range, all possible axis of attack directions, and the bomb run duration. He evaluates the flak thread at every 30 degree increment from the target. This analysis takes into account the gun's firepower. The results of the analysis will provide the formation of priority heading to follow during and after the bomb run. The flak analysis has proven to, it saves crews, planes, and equipment. Ideally, the target is attacked with the wind and sun at the formation's tail, and the bombers are routed along the target's weakest flak defense corridor. This was seldom the case. The axis of attack should not be where the formation's heading was into the sun, as this would lead to poor bombing accuracy. Axis of attack is a compromise between many factors. Let's take a look at an example of a flak analysis as outlined on this page from a May 1945 SYNPAC document titled Methods of Flak Analysis. The analysis approach is adopting the 8th Air Force's computational method. Assumptions are Target Location, Baka Machi. 
Bombing altitude is 25,000 feet at a 250 mile per hour ground speed, dropping 500 pound general purpose bombs at the end of a 60 second bomb run. The target is protected by 90 flat guns distributed in 16 gun batteries. Most of the guns are the Japanese 120 millimeter 45 caliber dual purpose guns. This map shows the location of the target and the 16 batteries protecting the target. Ballistic parameters of the Japanese anti-aircraft guns are shown on this page from an April 1945 SINPAC document titled Japanese Anti-Aircraft Material. The 120mm dual-purpose guns parameters are listed in this row. The projectile's time fuse can be set to up to 55 seconds. The flat gun's 120mm projectile's ballistic trajectory is shown on this chart. Since the bombers are attacking at 25,000 feet, the 120 millimeter gun's effective range is 9,800 yards or 5.6 miles. The 500 pound general purpose bombs will need to be released 4,542 yards or 2.6 miles back from the target when released at an altitude of 25,000 feet at a ground speed of 250 miles per hour as extracted from this bomb ballistic table. Ignoring the wind, the bomber will release the bombs 2.6 miles back from the target. The bomber will travel straight and level in the highlighted donut zone a distance of 4.2 miles while flying during the 60 second bomb run. A flak circle map can be developed based on the gun's effective density. The shading represents the density of fire per overlapping gun battery given the 5.6 mile effective range of each gun. This is a Venn diagram on steroids. Each of the 90 guns are represented. The gun's density zones vary from 4 to 68 guns. The sliver of area is covered by 68 flat guns. From this and additional data, a flat clock can be sketched. The target's best in and best out directions are sketched in the diagram. The sectors with the least flak densities are shown in green, and the zones with the highest flak densities are shown in red. Good to fair flak densities are shown in green crosshatch. The axis of attack is far more important as it represents the 60 second bomb run when no evasive maneuvers can occur and the formation is most vulnerable. Once the bombs have been released, evasive action can occur which can spoil the flak gunner's aim. So how important is it for crews to follow the flak analysis route recommendations? Of the 408 Air Force bombers that were lost over the target by flak, 25% or 100 bombers could have been saved had the crew strictly followed the flak intelligence recommended axis of attack and withdrawal routes. The analysis method presented is highly dependent on accurate accounting of target number and location of guns. This page from a 1945 AAF evaluation board document titled Flak Defenses of Strategic Targets in Southern Germany compares the 8th Air Force's flak intelligence predicted gun positions around Munich, Germany as of September 5, 1944 with the actuals. Flak intelligence estimated Munich was ringed with 239 heavy guns distributed at these gun battery locations. The number of actual guns totaled 252. Flak intelligence underestimated the number of flak guns by 6%, which is considered an excellent accounting. Summary points of the video. Flak routing to and from the target reduced bomber losses. A flak intelligence officer will calculate the best axis of attack at the target area. Flak intelligence tracked all German flak positions and was fairly accurate in this regard. Other main considerations include the sun's position and wind direction and speed. 1944 operational data shows that had formation strictly followed the target axis of attack route, 25% of the bombers would have not been lost. If you've enjoyed this flak routing deep dive review and found it worthy of your time, please consider engaging with the video by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.